Good morning, I am Pablo Renares with HTI Global and today's video is going to be related to the Bell 205, 212 and 412 Terror of Gearbox leak issues. Now if you're watching this video and you have a Huey 2, all what we're going to be talking about in this video can be applied also to that uh, helicopter model. So let's start right away with uh, our video. On this slide uh, I just want to show you that you have some references where you can go into and check how what is the maximum allowed of drops per uh, uh, source, mean source could be the input quill, output seal or whatever you, you are looking to it. So on this specific case if you look at it here you're going to tell the manual that you have a maximum of two drop per input quill. Uh, when I say a maximum of two drops, I mean uh, two drop per minute, is, that's the maximum allowed leak you are allowed to have on the specific wheel. But also if you start counting different sources, could be the output seal, and at the same time you also have a leak on the input wheel, and then you're going to have a noise uh, leak from the PC mechanism. Uh, you start seeing that uh, the maximum allowed total would be six drop per minute. Now, if you're doing, uh, if your helicopter is in an operation, how do you know very quickly about this? Well, you're gonna see all, all over the places, you're gonna be wet on the break of fin. And the key is the, the oil level on the transmission. That will give you the first idea that you have on a problem. One of the problems you're gonna see if your helicopter is in an operation, that uh, the location where you're gonna have this uh, uh, input wheel is gonna be very, hard to reach it out because you're going to have a terroid right shaft, you're going to have a cover and, and so on. So uh, the best bet is to make sure the level is correct. But remember, if you are in an operation, a uh, remote operation, you have to be cautious where you're landing the helicopter. Sometimes the helicopter can be landing in a place that is not even. If that happens, the level we have different uh, indications so you have to make sure that before you start getting concerned make sure ask yourself is the helicopter level or whenever you're doing in a on a, on a, on a face on the helicopter on a major inspection it could be the um anything that you you can go to a shop and uh where you know the the floor is going to be level that would be a good place where you can check the level of the transmission but again if the helicopter is parked or landing in a remote area and uh, the 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 area where it's landed, the helipad is not even, that would not be a very accurate place to check for the level. Now, if you have any doubt, look around the input wheel and the output uh, shaft seal and uh, make sure how the condition of the seal. Now, on the next slide, I would like to explain a little bit more about the differences between a seeping seal and a leaking seal. This is a big difference. You have to remember when a seal is seeping, it is not a grounding item and that you don't have to do anything on it. Only when you have a leak that a show with drop of oil uh, that when you have to take taking care of this issue. Now, in order to give you a better idea, I have some slide for you here. This is the uh, Terra gearbox installed on the helicopter. So right here, you can see the, um, the nut and everything installed and right here what are you missing is the adapter uh, and more stuff that go into the uh, pinion this is the pinion or the input pinion this is the spacer this is a spacer right here the shining part is called the worst leaf the black part here is what we call the lip that is part of the seal this type of seal is called a garlock seal okay so if you start seeing oil wet around the lip but you don't see anything around dripping or get wet around here we call sipping and sip is usually used with into which means it soaks into something meaning uh, the seal here you're gonna see this wet if you put your finger through it you're gonna see it's wet but you don't see any dripping or a major issue about spraying oil all over the place remember all this when you're flying is turning this part uh, the pinion the sleeve, all these two are running or dynamic and the lip on this specific case is a static. Okay. Now, uh, when you start looking at it, you see that round uh, yellow uh, go around the, the worst leaf. That's when we start seeing uh, wet there. That's what we call seeping. 
And again, this is normal and you can continue flying with no issue at all. Now talking about a leak, and leak described as a liquid coming out of something. In this specific case, is when you have, after having a CP for, for some time, which is okay, you can keep flying it, it start getting into the worst leaf and also the leaf start getting worn out. And then what happened is liquid, in this case oils, coming out of the, uh, the seal and it's going to start coming and dropping uh, uh, into uh, the surroundings. Normally, you're going to see this uh, not on this specific way. This is an example I'm giving you. When you have the helipi flying, a lot of things are turning here, and with the oil touch the dry chap, it's going to be spraying this all over the place. So all this area, all this area is going to be with oil, even the shaft. So uh this is you have to show you what a leak means so when you have a leak and uh, you have dropped this is what the condition or the criteria of the manual is telling you you are allowed to have two drop per minute per quill so this is simple quill two drop that's the maximum if you got three drops per minute that means you have to replace the garlock seal and maybe you have to replace the uh worsley which is very advisable now a leak is a grounding item. You're not supposed to have uh, extreme leak on the gearboxes. Oil has two functions. It's going to be for lubrication and cooling. So if you start draining the gearbox, you not only start having issues with particles, but also you can have uh, over temper condition that can make a, 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 a terror gearbox fail. So it's very important for you guys to keep track and inspecting uh, the areas where the seals are for uh, leaks. On this slide, we can see uh, a breakdown of the Terror gearbox. And uh, uh, one of the things we're gonna see in the future, uh, it is that uh, this is gonna be used for the 412 HP EP EPI. And this is due to the adapter. The adapter is because you have Thomas couplings and the coupling is different but pretty much else gonna be very similar. They are more into it that I normally explain this when we go through uh, full training or initial. Uh, I like to split the issues for the leaks on the gearbox in different locations and I put a number on it. The first one, the one I was showing earlier is through the input quill and I call it number one. Number two is called, uh, I call it number two and this one is by over here and this is when we have the pitch change mechanism and right here is the second issue that uh, even Bell uh, is going to give you a TV which we're going to be discussing in a moment and the last one is going to be on the output shaft this is the output shaft and this is the out output shaft seal this is the seal and this seal here this one here is the one uh, that I also can be replaced in the field and they have few bulletin. One is the, the seal, but also uh, they have some improvement and they put it right here, uh, split its leaf. We're gonna go into that in a moment. On this slide, we're gonna have the two different year boxes uh, we're gonna be using in pretty much most of the medium group. Uh, so we start at the beginning of the video. Uh, 205, 212, 412 and even Huey too, they're gonna to have kind of similar gearboxes. What's the difference would be the input quill. This one, uh, you see here, it's gonna be used on the 205, gonna be used on the 212, it's gonna be used on the Huey two, and also it's going to be used on the 412 Classic and SP. On this one, if you see the difference between this one and that one, this one is gonna be used on the 412 HP, EP, and EPI. There are more differences into it, but uh, normally we discuss this when we go to the full training. Uh, there's more into it about bearings and so on. So uh, just for the sake of this training, we just uh, focus on the big difference from outside. And of course, part number will be different, but uh, physically would be the, uh, the both uh, input quill adapters are different. We're gonna have some toolings to do uh, seal replacement. Again, we're talking about leak number one. Leak number one, it is for the input quill. Uh, so the input quill seal can be replaced without removing the gearbox. The only thing you need to remove is going to be the T 
pterodactyl right shaft number six, which is the one in the vertical fin. And also there's more stuff we have to do, which as, uh, I'm gonna start explaining now. In tooling required for this one, for the 212 and uh, early age 412, it's gonna be the T101880 and the T101449. These two are not only gonna be used for the 212, but also it's gonna be used for the 412. So we can say these two tools are gonna be using for whatever tool, uh, gearbox you have, okay? One of the things they're going to change when we talk about the 212 is going to be the T101-307. This one, 307, uh, is going to be specifically for this kind of uh, input wheel. The difference on the 412 is going to be this uh, 412-240-008-101, which uh, in a way is going to hold the adapter when we remove the knot and more stuff inside the quill. Uh, Again, this is just a generic. We're gonna go, we're gonna break down. We're gonna be doing it in a moment. So uh, let's move on with a different slide so we can get more details and more information for you guys. Well, on this slide, this tool I already mentioned to you, the T101449 is gonna be used in both location. But uh, if you look in the books, there's nowhere in the books tell you to use this one. It tells you to use this, the T101600. Again, this tool is very difficult to use. As a matter of fact, if you're trying to do it with a gearbox install, it's almost impossible. So what we do is, even in the helicopter, when I was there as instructor, I got a 449, and this diameter, this diameter, from here to here, we're gonna reduce it to 3.375. If I were you, you just put it 3.370. So you got 5,000, so you can install it and lose the knot. When you're doing this job, one of the things you have to remember that uh, all this is gonna have pro seal around and also this knot is gonna be safe to wire. Um, one thing I need to emphasize to you guys, when you're doing the safety wire, when you finish the safety wire, the pigtail has to be inboard, no outboard. So the loop is going to be on this part here, right here, and the pigtail is going to be inside. Make sure that when you put the pigtail very close to the knot, because this is dynamic. The pinion and the uh, worst leaf and the spacer are dynamic, so you don't want to get anything closer and they start touching and chafing. Now, anytime you're doing this job and you start removing everything and you focus on this, many people forget about one of the most important thing. If you're gonna replace the seal, first thing you do, what is it? Drain the gearbox. If you start taking this nut off and you have it drained the gearbox, what happens is you're gonna pour all the oil into the airframe, vertical chaff, it's going to start an issue with maybe, uh, the worst case scenario, you're going to have a uh, problem with the rivets, start getting loose rivets uh, all, all over the places. So remember, make sure that whenever you're replacing a seal on the gearbox like this, make sure you drain the uh, oil. Now, this tool, uh, or the tool changes we did on here to use it on the gearbox, remember, we're doing this when the gearbox is installed, so it's very confined and hard to reach. So this tool setting, you see here a stud is threaded into the pinion and uh, this got a special watcher and so forth. Uh, I'm going to detail further uh, when we go to the full training of the, of the helicopter, it could be initial or, or recurring training that we are uh, hired for. Uh, we talk about more in detail and we have the drawings pretty much how to do this work aid. Having this setting complete, like this with the stud, the washer and the nut, close the, the T101449, it's going to make your job a lot easier. Uh, without this, and you wanna continue using the T101660, my advice is you better remove the gearbox. Uh, uh, it's gonna be, I don't wanna say uh, impossible, very close to be impossible, it's up to you guys, okay? We're still talking about lead location number one, which is the input wheel. Now, the next thing we're gonna be doing is uh, separating the input wheel, removal of the adapter. In this particular case, we're gonna have the 
gearbox for uh, 212, 205, Huey 2, 412 Classic and SP, which you have this type of uh, uh, um, adapter, okay? For this one, we're gonna need a T101 uh, 307, and as you can see on this specific uh, picture, we're gonna have holding the adapter in place, and with the extension and a breaker bar, we're gonna remove this nut, I'm sorry, this bolt. This bolt is the one keep everything in place. Yes, there's more to talk about this. And again, uh, if you don't know anything about this, I advise you to contact us for uh, initial training. Uh, we are more than happy to give you a quote uh, initial. Or if you forgot about this uh, for a long time, not done this, we can even do on a recurring training for you guys. So uh, you can email us or contact uh, or send a comment on YouTube. I'm more than happy to reply to you. But uh, all this setting, all this setting you got here is to break the torque of this bolt and remove it so everything else can be removed, okay? E even the inner coupling and outer coupling, everything. So the, the final job is to expose the pinion uh, in order to remove that nut. This nut is also the housing for the garlock seal. And this is pretty much what we're going to be doing now. Now... Again, this is the best setting to remove uh, the, the nut. And if you have the uh, HP and EP, like this one here, and this one, we're going to be using the 412 240008-11. And this is just to hold the, uh, the adapter. And then again, with the extension on a breaker bar, we're going to go all the way down to this ball and break the torque, remove it, and then we can take everything out. So you're exposing the pinion, the end of the pinion, and the nut with the garlock seal in order to be removed. This is pretty much where the seal is. Uh, when you remove completely that nut, this is where you're looking at it, and you can do it outside. Just put a rack around there. Uh, be careful you're doing this in the ramp and you have more helicopter. You don't want to leave the gearbox exposed for contamination, so make sure you cover it put some rack or paper around, I'm sorry, plastic bag or whatever, so nothing get into the contamination. But if you have access to a hanger, that is even better. Uh, when you're removing this knot and you want to take the seal out, now you're removing the seal so you don't care because it's already damaged, you can damage it, break it, that's fine. And uh, most uh, common is this practice where you put pro seal around. So this seal, it can have a little uh, uh, fight to be removed from the nut. So one of the things we use for helping you is heat gun. If you have a heat gun, it will make the process easier. If you have a press, it's even better. So you're gonna flip it around and you press out the seal. This is the garlock seal. Uh, as a normal rules, uh, the lip tell you where you wanna keep the oil. So you wanna keep the oil inside the gearbox so the lip is inboard. There are certain systems, certain components, uh, the seal is gonna be installed backward I don't want to say backward, but with the leap outboard, uh, normally it's done that way when we use it for grease, where you use the leap to hold the grease, but also allows you to purge the grease. On this specific case, uh, because we want to keep the oil inside the gearbox, the leap is inboard. If you have any doubt about this, the manual will tell you and guide you the orientation of the seal. This is a, a, to give you an example of uh, how confined the area is to remove this uh, seal. Uh, again, all the gap seal, you got a safety wire. Also, when you do a safety wire, you're gonna see when you remove the safety wire, the pigtail is inboard right here. Keep it that way. When you're gonna put it back again, you torque it down, and you're gonna put the safety wire from outside inboard, and here you're gonna put the pigtail. And the reason for it is if you have to remove the gearbox, the pigtail is not on your way and you are not scratching or damaging the aluminum of the forge part, which is the base for the terror gearbox. Now, on this one, on this slide, I like to show more about what else we have to replace. Not only the seal, but also we have to get into the worst lift. This worst lift, if you look at it here, you see that line? That line is more than enough to replace the uh, worst lift. The worst lift, 
uh, the main reason why bell use a worst leaf, you don't have to remove this, you replace the spacer, you just remove, replace the worst leaf and you keep using the same uh, spacer. So the worst leaf uh, is where the seal touch. The, uh, the, this spacer and the worst leaf are going to be dynamic. On this specific case, the seal is static. No matter which one we're talking about, if you see the adapter here and this adapter, this is for again 212, 412 SP Classic or 205 or Huey, or Huey 2, and this is for 412 HP, EP, and EPI. Either one is going to have on a spacer, and that spacer is going to have a worse leaf. Now, how do you do this? Pictures are the one that I like to explain how you're going to replace the worst leaf. You look at it here. This space is going to have four notches, four groove hole like this, and this is where you're going to uh, align these four pins into this cutout. So when you press it out, you're going to slide out the worst leaf out of the spacer. This tool is a T101880. This tool have two position. When you have it like this, is to remove the old worst leaf. Now the worst leaf have different. Uh, chamfer. You see this is a chamfer and you have a chamfer in the back side. So remember when you're going to install the worst leaf, uh, make sure the orientation. You have this on the books, it shows you this way. If you see here, you see the chamfer here, you're going to be out. So it helps you for installation of the garlic seal on the nut. What you do next, after you remove this one out, you're going to have the new worst leaf and what you do is you install the worst leaf on the tool flip it around and then you're going to put the, um, the uh, spacer and you press it back in. In here, we're going to have, in here, we're going to have uh, uh, a bulletin, the bell release in order to stop the leak coming from here. So what happened is, they were uh, some kind of quick fix that you call bell engineering and they tell you by a letter put right here a little bit of pro seal against the inner races to stop the leak from here. Now uh, that happened uh, I think 2012 and on until they come up with this bulletin on 2015. So maybe I'm guessing about five years they were advising customer to put pro seal here with a letter. Now this one here you have to replace the spacer in order to install this uh, all ring or ring 217 okay this all ring is not there on the drawing unless you're doing the bulletin now many many years back and another instructor in Bell and myself we started discussing about this issue and uh, we saw a cutaway we saw a cutaway of the whole gearbox and we find out we noticed that uh, on the back side here there is a cavity that uh, is, is very similar to the tail rotor output quill located on the sub of the transmission and that one you have an o-ring so we start looking around and we found ourselves a very good o-ring matter of fact this picture is from uh, that o-ring the one we did it the first time and that's the M83248-1-1 uh, uh, forward slash 1-215 uh, which is different than this one so I don't want to confuse this if you have not done this bulletin and you have the old spacer and you have a leak and you're in the middle of nowhere and you want to see if you can stop the leak, use the 215. Now, it's not on the books, no, but I really you are not doing anything uh, and I advise many operators in the jungle and they use it until Bell come out with this bulletin. And this bulletin, because it's bigger, you have to put now a bigger O-ring, but uh, you have to change also the spacer. Uh, really, you don't have to do that. It's my advice. Again, what I'm explaining to you is no uh, approved by Bell. If you want to go by Bell, you have to go do this bulletin and you need to put a different uh, o ring. If you do this one, it worked fine, the 215, uh, and it worked at one leak. Now, the last slide, I'm going to explain what I believe is the issue with the gearbox. I don't think all the fixes Bell is doing is gonna really resolve the leaks problem in the gearbox. 
and I hope you wait until the end to show you what is the the possible cause of all this okay I'll leave that for the last I'm gonna show you all the bulletins all the quick fixes or the fixes Bell have done to stop all the different issues on the terror gearbox but at the end I'm gonna comment about what I believe is the problem now what I'm trying to see I already told you this is the uh, the gearbox this is a transmission and in transmission we're gonna have the tear rotor up with quill and right here that ring is what caught our attention to that instructor myself and if you look at the drawing for or the IPB for the uh, input quill on the, on the netting gear box there was no o-ring really the cutout you got here is very similar to the cutout we have in here very similar so just comparing one to another, what we did, we started finding what is the right O-ring sizes and we just, without changing anything, not even the spacer, the same one you have, we install the uh, O-ring part number dash 215 and that will fix the problem. Matter of fact, when I advised these customers about this seal or this O-ring, uh, I told them, please, when you put it on it, uh, please uh, let me know if that fixed the problem. It fixed it, but not for a long run. And I tell you, it's going to continue having issues uh, because I believe uh, the problem is something else. We're going to see at the end of this video. Again, here we're going to see uh, the uh, spacer and the worst sleeve is going to be against the inner races. So this is very critical part. Any torquing you're going to do on the nut and also on the bolt that goes inside of it here are very important. Why? These are truss bearings, so when I torque the knot, I'm pressing the outer races, and when I torque in the ball going inside here, it's going to lock and preload the inner races. Truss bearings are very critical, and you are not allowed to mess with any of this truss bearing in field maintenance. Only overhaul personnel are authorized to mess with or touch or work with uh, truss bearings. And again, here's the nut. That's a nut here. And now uh, we already have, imagine, uh, we pull the seal. One thing that I caught my attention one, in one uh, class I was doing overseas is that uh, I noticed that you see the word slip here. You see the marking right there. So what happened is uh, the customer saw the word slip damage, but he don't want to replace it. So what he did, when he pressed the new seal, he didn't press it all the way, so he just started pressing a little bit. It's going to be around here, maybe. And he believed, well, now it's going to be running a different location, and I can fix the leak. That is not approved, and that is a very bad practice. This only, as far as I remember, it's only one seal. When you install it, you do it by dimension. It's on the 212 uh, bed rotor hub. On the trunnion, when you go from oil to grease, 220,000 this is how much depth when you press on the garlock seal everywhere else when you have a garlock seal you're gonna press it all the way down never a little bit or different location because one of the problems you're gonna have is uh, when you start that way you don't go all the way down the problem is that the seal might not be perpendicular to the area where you're running to it and that's why uh, I'm seeing people trying to do this and guess what it leaks so again Every single time if the manual doesn't tell you anything otherwise You're gonna install the garlock seal all the way down to the end Be careful also with how you wanna press the seal if you're gonna press the seal This is steel but very thin steel what happen when you put this on it people have a, like a harbor please or a spacer and maybe it's not that a big diameter and they put too much pressure on what happened you bend this seal automatically that seal is scrap when you're doing this you have to make sure that you have a very large press bar so you are not only getting the end but you get around and don't over torque if you think you get to the end relieve the press the hydraulic press flip it around and check if you're already touching the bottom part if you are not touching keep a little bit more but again do not over press the seal because you're gonna damage the garlic seal right here and I see many places that this is already bent brand new means already scrapped okay one more thing 
if you start working and putting this knob back on it and you forgot the spacer, what happened once is uh, the guy who did this, he put the knob first and then he flipped the, the spacer and installed it with this side out, this part out. He installed it with this side out. That, I don't know, see it. This part out. Of course, it was backward. That's wrong. So the first thing you're going to install is the spacer and then you install a nut. My advice? What you do is you got this spacer and you're going to install it through the seal. Make sure it's got you can put a little bit of uh, oil. So the lip seal is going to be spreading around the, the chamfer here and then it's sitting nice and neat and you slide everything together. In that way you don't forget anything and it help you for installation. Okay. Now we're going to start talking about number to leak number two. Uh, leak number two is going to be about this location here where we have the issue. This is the issue where uh, all start coming out of from. Uh, this uh, leak uh, issue bell in a way give you the guidance for trying to stop the leak but uh, I'm going to go deeper to uh, so uh, we're going to I'm going to analyze with, with you guys to show you that even during the sign, there is nothing there for leaking oil. And again, my point is that on the last slide, after I explained pretty much all the issue, the gearbox is on the bulletin, I'm going to comment to you guys and explain you what I believe is the problem with the gearbox. So let's talk about this one. First of all, if you have uh, lead uh, oil leak to here, uh, Bell give you uh, an, uh, an, a technical bulletin to try to resolve it. But in order to resolve it, we have to take these push-pull tubes. In order to remove the push-pull, we have to go on the other side of the gearbox where you have the tail rudder. And we need to now start to take things apart from the cross uh, the crosshead. Now, the crosshead, uh, you see it here. Let's see if I can I unblock it. This is the opposite side of the gearbox, and what we have to do it in here, we need to take the retainer, the locking, we take pretty much everything until we get to this point, okay? And what happened is, this leaf is threaded on the push-pull tubes. So if you don't remove it, there's no way you can remove this pull from the other side. This is located on the right side of the helicopter, and what we're we talking about, this one here, is located on the left side. So this is the left side of the helicopter, this is on the right side. So we have to take pretty much everything in here. We need to take everything in here in order to remove that push-pull tubes. So again, you have to go to get access to remove that sleeve that sleeve is threaded inside, so you need to unscrew it from the push-pull tube in order to clear the tube to be able to remove it from the opposite side, okay? Now, before we go into the bulletin, uh, I'd like to uh, explain to you guys, this is the opening where you see that cap. This retainer, this cover, when you remove it, this is where you're going to see it. And here, we're going to have to knot this knot. It's an aluminum nut, and this is for locking the outer rays of the thrust bearings. And this is then still nut to press the inner rays. So these two, you are not going to touch it. But this is all you see. Now, in here, in here, we see the cap. This cap is this one, or if you don't know what we're talking about, is this is the cap I'm talking about. This one, made of aluminum, is this one here. Now, between all this knot and the chaff and the bearing and the cap, there's nothing between them to stop the seal. The only ring we have is this one here. This is only for you don't get any water going inside the gearbox. And that little one here is to press the Teflon, the excluder, so it put a little pressure on the chaff so nothing going inside, on the push-pull tube, I'm sorry, nothing get inside. But uh, looking at this, there's nothing on the design part for stopping all coming out. 
Why is that? Because all the lubrication happening here is by gravity. There's no pressure. So really, the engineer said, well, we don't need to put anything here. So even though uh, in the past, in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, we never have any problem with this. Nowadays, mm -hmm. all is coming out of here. And again, we're going to see at the end of this slide, the last, the last slide of the presentation. And again, in order to reach that point, we need to remove everything to get to this. And this is a leak number two. It's coming out of from here. And this bulletin, what is explained to you is that when you remove, uh, you're gonna have a housing, you're gonna have a scooter, an O-ring, and what it's telling you that when you install the the the, the bearing, it's a kind of a nanotron, it's a, bla a plastic bearing goes in there, you're gonna install it with ProSeal. Uh, with that ProSeal on it, uh, Bell believe you're gonna stop the leaks coming out of there. But again, that's a technical bulletin, it's not mandatory, and this is the reason of the bulletin for stopping the leaks on this side of the gearbox. The bulletin, again, these gearboxes are, we'll talk about, got different. I took example the 412, and the bulletin is the 412-09220. Uh, maybe on the 212 have different number and remember I explained to you in one of the other videos the two number on the center 09 means the year 2009 when they came up with that bulletin okay so if you go on the 212 go on the Huey 2 205 you're gonna go on the year 2009 and you're gonna see a, a bulletin very similar to this one even the title should be the same say like tail rotor gearbox excluder housing leak prevention Okay, so I'm using this as an example, but again, you have to, when you do this job and you're gonna answer it, make sure you answer it accordance with the bulletin for that specific model. Not all the bulletins are gonna have the same number on the 412 or the 220. That number will change as well as the two, three digits, which is, uh, it's a 212, gonna be 212, it's a 205, 205, and so on, okay? Now, we're gonna start talking about leak number three. Leak number three is going to be related to the output shaft seal. This seal is installed on the sleeve. This sleeve is going to be the housing for the output shaft alignment bearing, okay, and you're going to have the garlock seal. Between the garlock seal and the bearing, we're going to have a retainer. That retainer, it's made of steel, is to keep in place the bearing. So you have to be careful how to remove this uh, garlock seal. And I have a video to explain you that to you. Now, original this garlock seal, the lip used to be orange. Um, as far as I remember, this bulletin was introduced first by PHI. And uh, it's very smart and interesting that what they did, they put up a automotive bar here. It's called spirit leaf. That spirit leaf, I think I have a picture here. This is a spirit sleeve. Uh, this is for uh, the, 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 the front ends of the automotive. So when you got the bearing worn out and the damage, the, 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 the end of the, where you put the bearing on it, what happened, you're gonna install this and this cap is so you can tap on it when you install it. We don't need that one for the helicopter because it's gonna be deeper into the output shaft. So we don't need that one. But this tells you right there that is an automotive part. It's called a sleeve and you have a bulletin. The reason for that bulletin, for the reason for that bulletin is that a garlock seal used to wear the output shaft and I believe the maximum allows 1,000 so it wasn't that much. So what happened when you install the wear sleeve, uh, you only replace the wear sleeve but you are not damaging the output shaft. Now, in order to have this wear sleeve, you have to change the part number of the garlock seal. On the new one, the lip is black. So we could say that when you see the lip black, you already have the bulletin because you installed already the wear sleeve. Same thing we talk about the input quill. Every time you replace the, uh, the garlock seal, uh, check it out, the, the spirit sleeve, to see the condition. If you see any marking or worn out here, you should replace both. And I have here a few uh, pictures to show you how to do this. Now, in order to uh, 
do the job, you have to take the tail rotor out because we need to remove the sleeve out of the way and you do this outside, it's better doing outside than trying to do an install. Okay, my advice, don't install the guard lock seal uh, on the gearbox install. Just remove the, uh, the sleeve out and do it. And if you're doing this outside the ramp, that is not very advisable. It's better to put inside a hanger because you're gonna have, when you remove this lift, all this gear, everything is gonna be open to the atmosphere. Any uh, contamination can cause uh, major damage on the bearings or pinion or gears. So my advice is do this job in a right environment, which is inside the hangar. Now, the leak number three is related to leaks on this seal, which is called the output shaft seal. Okay, uh, we already talked about amount of uh, allow of leaks, gonna be two drop per minute, dynamic or static. Now, if you're trying to emphasize on that square, this video is show you how you remove that uh, garlic seal. And this short video, I'm gonna put it for you here. I'm gonna take the volume because I'm gonna talk about this. This tool you see here, let me see if I got a better picture. Now, this tool is made of a different, this is a slide hammer, and this guy, when you install it, is tapered on the tip. So the more you screw it in, you're spreading these four uh, sections, getting more bite onto the bearing, on, on the seal, I'm sorry. So uh, this tool is per slick, and I have a, a manufacturer this, the inventor of this tool went under, they, they, they closed down doors, but I have a, a friend of mine who sells the kit. If you're interested, uh, write in the comments if you're interested so I can find you pricing and uh, disponibility. Um, I'm more than happy to help you. This tool is excellent. Now, on this short video, you're gonna see how I'm gonna start pulling it out. Well, not me, this is my friend Rene from HPS in Florida. We're doing, we were doing an overhaul and transmission on a gearbox. That was last year, 2018. Now, I'm gonna play the video and I start talking while he's doing this to explain just this a little more. So what happened right now, he hammered in to make sure it deep in on it. And then he right now threatened that part to spread in the section further and get a better bite. You see, he's right now threaded in it and this separation now is getting a better bite. When you feel it's very tight, that it so went through the rubber, now into the metal, remember the garlic seal is rubber, but then it's metal. So it's very tight and already, let me tell you one thing, let me put a pause. I already heated up, I already heated up because I noticed that they put a lot of pro seal and this seal been there for many, many years. So why, uh, not heating it up, it make it very hard. So again, when you have a seal, when you heat it up around, it will help you to pop that seal better. Now, we continue. Uh, yeah, it's not that easy, but you're gonna start seeing this breaking up now, and as soon it's gonna be popping out, and it's very slick, uh, the way you remove the seal. Okay, uh, keep hammering up. If you start getting loose, you gotta keep threading back in. The more you thread in, the more spread on the four sections and that is already coming out right there. And that's the best way to remove that seal, okay? And it's very simple, very good tool and have four, diff three different sizes. So when you buy this tool, it comes with three different, so you can use pretty much in, in all garlic seal you have on different model helicopters. It's a pretty good tool. In here, we can see the retainer and the alignment bearing for the output shaft, okay? So we only gonna mess with this. One thing you have to remember when you're gonna put a new seal back on it, you're gonna have some passages of oil. Be careful when you put pro seal and uh, you start pressing back the new garlic seal in place. My advice is do not install, the, uh, do not install uh, pro seal in here. Put the pro seal on this side of the new garlic seal. Why is that? When I put pro seal here and I press it, it's going to squeeze out. But if I put pro seal here and then I press the garlic seal on it, I'm pushing in garlic and pro seal and you can block these passages. These passages are two veins that come from the scalper 
to lubricate this bearing. If you start blocking them, no oil coming here, and then you're gonna have a chip light for particles due to lack of lubrication on this alignment bearing. So be careful when you install a new garlic seal. Here's the bullet thing I was mentioning to you. This is the 412-99-157, and it's related to the speed sleeve. The speed sleeve, when you wanna apply to this bullet you have to put a specific part number garlic seal, and this uh, speed sleeve, this one is right here. This part here, okay? This part here is that part. Now, when you got this, uh, ready to measure what I advise to you guys put a mark where you think it's gonna have be installed why is that because that marking you put on it when you finish installation with the worst lift the instruction is told you can be more in or out plus or minus 10,000 so it's very uh, very small amount of uh, clearance you're gonna have you want to make sure that the garlic seal is gonna be running onto the worst lift not away from it then it's gonna leak a lot okay on these pictures, you're going to see the instruction of the process for installation of the speed sleeve. Uh, with this work aid, this is, uh, um, with this special tool, is the way you're going to start press it in. It's pretty easy. Again, you don't need this tool. You can make one, uh, and I'll show you a different way how you can install this uh, speed sleeve. But if you have it, it's an excellent tool, very easy to use. And uh, you can see here some of my picture what i used to do i put an arrow with different uh, tip of the arrows to show me when i'm getting closer you see this one already passed it that tells me i'm getting closer so i go slower one of the problem is if you overshoot it and you go deeper than the location where it used to be now the spill is too much in and the garlic seal is going to be in the air and it's very difficult to pull it back out so you have to go easy on it Make sure you don't overshoot it. Make sure you're gonna put it right where you put a marking on it. Uh, when you finish the installation, you're gonna have that edge you have to remove. You're gonna cut it off. If you look at here, we're gonna use we're gonna use like a dog plier and start pulling like those old uh, tuna cans. Then removing it like this. And when you finish, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna uh, put a little bit of scotch bry around. Make sure this no. Uh, debris or sharp edges so you don't want to damage the new garlic seal mainly on this part here I don't think the seal is gonna get that far but uh, the debris is good because when you style this leaf on it the alignment bearings are gonna go through here and you don't want to scratch or damage the roller bearings of the alignment the alignment bearing rollers conclusion after all this bulletin that I already explained to you input quill, P-change mechanism seal, output chaff seal. This leaks, they never were there before. I remember late 80s, early 90s, discussing with my co-working friends that this gearbox doesn't ever have any issue, any problem. My belief, the problem with the gearbox is because it's pressurizing. This new cap is the 412 cap which in the past it was different they have uh, steel wood this one have aluminum wood now this is a very good sample that uh, we took it out in one of the company we have four different ones look at the different uh length that means because it's aluminum they compress what happened when you have a piece of aluminum you compress you put in like a plug this one you got more free air that can go through it this one eh, not very good but this one is very tight and they get dirty my advice is not on the books you're supposed to take this every 300 hours and clean it make sure it's clean and you can blow through it and that is not forces one of the things that happened with this gearbox is by design when they're doing testing on it they pressurize it i believe i left them out check it when I, it's about one and a half to two psi and the reason why they pressurize and make sure that that pressure build up will not leak anywhere and when they went through this uh, testing the gearbox behaved correctly fine but they were using the 204 part number cap this one is a 412 
and sysdens when Bell replaced this uh, from the 204 to the 412 is when we start having all these leaks. During my time in Bell, I uh, was I contact engineering, even manufacturing, and uh, it's interesting that uh, there was not a single testing of uh, quality control with this car when they sampled it. There was nothing on it. Uh, sadly, uh, my experience and uh, help with different operators, when they come to me with uh, Netgear gearbox leaks issues, I'll tell you the first thing, don't do anything, clean this cap, make sure it's clear and it's not compact. If it's compacted, it will not work like a filter, it will work like a plug and it pressurizes. One of the operators that I helped, it was a president helicopter and uh, normally they fly very high altitude all the time because the city is high, it's about 8,000 feet. And when the helicopter, this is a 412, when they're flying in the city, there was no issue, but when they go down to the coast, which is, uh, I don't know, 100, 200 feet high, and then come back again to 8,000, it produced this kind of issue, leaks, and the leak was on the input wheel. Now, my advice, at that time, I already knew about this issue, and I told the, uh, uh, a student at that time, he said, uh, he called me for this issue, he said, why don't you go here and clean this, make sure it's not compact like this, make sure it's uh, open it up is a spring effect. When you try to press on the cap, you're supposed to see that uh, on the re you're going to have a, a, a retainer and you're going to have a holes uh, cover. When you press on it, it should have a very good effect of spring effect. If it's so solid, they won't move anything. It means it's like this one, and that means that uh, is plug instead of a filter for venting. Do you have to remember that we're going to have two major type of vent uh, caps? One is called not vented, and uh, you know that it's not vented because you're going to have a black dot. This one that is vented is going to have a white dot on top of it. That's an indication for for to know when a cap is vented mm -hmm. or not vented. So remember that my advice for you guys that the problem with this cap is this uh, the 412 cap. And then one of the things I wrote down here, one of the most frequent issues of the net gear bus leak is due to pressurization. This is my idea or my belief, the problem with the gearbox is no bells, Pablo Linares uh, through HDI Global. And it's due to the 412 cap. This kind of issue did not occur with 204 cap. The reason between the 204 and 412, besides the, the form it is, that uh, on, the, on, the four, on the 204 cap, this was, made of a steel wood, no aluminum. Aluminum, you can compress it. Steel was impossible. So that's why one of the changes Bell did went from steel to aluminum, and I believe that's the issue. This aluminum work as a filter, but when it get compressed, blocks venting of the gearbox causing pressurization. Well, I hope this uh, video Regard, related to uh, Natty Gear Box uh, leak issues, clarify a few uh, concerns you might have or give you some input for future uh, troubleshooting that you might encounter on your place of work. I hope you like the video. Uh, any other comes, uh, um, subject you want to discuss or for me to do video, you can write it down on comments. And also, please visit our webpage, www.htiglobal.us, where you can go on their courses and you can see all different courses we offer. All of them are FAA approved. And I hope you enjoy the video and thank you for your time. Enjoy your day. Thank you.